to bring you all up to speed on the Section 106 negotiations with the Navy for the mitigation on the adverse effect that the noise from the growlers will have on historic resources, historic resources only, in the reserve. As you all know, the Navy's final offer that they made to us over, after several months of negotiation, and when I say us, I don't just mean the town, I mean the town, the trust board, the, okay, all, the all the consulting parties, um, was a million dollars for restoration work on the ferry house. Um, all of us were in, all of the consulting parties unanimously agreed not to accept that, that mitigation. And, and so, and as I told you, that, that if you don't, if we don't accept it, there's a really good chance that would be the end. So that was the end. The Navy took um, steps to terminate the Section 106 process, which they have to do formally with the Advisory Council of Historic Preservation in Washington, D.C. It is a very formal process to terminate because it is, it rarely happens, rarely happens. Um, and then the ACHP has 45 days to make its recommendation to the Navy. Again, it's strictly a recommendation. The, the, ultimately, in the end, no one can tell the Navy what to do on this mitigation. Um, in the meantime, Congressman Larson, let's see, in between, in between all the consulting parties uh, declining the, uh, the last offer of mitigation and before the Navy terminated, Congressman Larson got in there and sent a letter to the Secretary of the Navy saying, you need to provide $2 million for the Ferry House and $2 million for the Coopville Wharf for, for preservation work. Um, at, at that, and the Navy said no to Congressman Larson and started termination. Now, after termination was started, Congressman Larson has sent another letter to the Secretary of the Navy saying you need to provide the $1 million for the ferry house that you've already offered and $1.5 million for the wharf. The Navy has not responded to that. They haven't said yes, they haven't said no. So that's one thing going on on the side. And then, in, and then just in the middle of all this, the ACHP in Washington, D.C. has decided that they're going to have a public meeting in Coopville. Huh? About this mitigation, yeah, on Wednesday. This Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow. Not tomorrow. The next Wednesday, at five o'clock at the high school commons. They have made an agenda. They have contacted Island County Sheriff's Office for police work. They have. They've. They've done all this, and not, not a single person has contacted me <coughs> from the ACHP. It is. It's going to be something. Oh my God. Um, Where is that? The Commons, High School Commons, five o'clock, five to seven. I am frantically writing them emails and calling them. I'm not getting any response so far. Um, trying to at least talk to them about the agenda. I talked to the captain of the base today about the agenda. He's he's not comfortable with the agenda either. As of this morning, at 10 o'clock this morning, neither he nor I knew that the meeting was definitely on, and I heard that it was on you know, naturally through the Sound Defense Alliance, who I get all my information from. Um, and I have confirmed that it is, I, I did get a hold of somebody back east um, in the EIS office tonight, who confirmed that yes, the meeting is on for next Wednesday. Um, I hope that I can speak to someone in person before the meeting actually happens. I'm on the agenda. I'm on the agenda and they haven't asked me. They haven't even talked to me. So, um, for Come, it'll be interesting. <laughs> so um, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It might be good to know how many council people might attend in case we need to. Oh, would that. we have to? Would we have to notice that? Okay. Just because this is an ongoing discussion yeah. amongst you. Yes, if you're all going to be there. How about if we just publish it? Yeah. yeah. That it that it okay. the meeting exists and there may be a forum, but you won't be discussing this inside. Okay. Observing. Okay, well, great. When Rip, um, Congressman Marshall was doing all this, did he talk to you about what he was requesting? <laughs> His office called me when he requested the two million. Two million. Let's see. 
network and asked me if I could support that. Mm -hmm. And my answer was, I could support that to the council. I could support a recommendation for that amount of money to the council. Um, now there's a lot of people in the community that don't want us to support that, $4 million. But that was, it was never a real, the Navy never agreed to that, so we were all talking about something that didn't really exist. So then Congressman Larson's office called back and said, would you support $1 million to the Ferry House and $1.5 million to the, to the wharf? And before I could even really answer that question, you know, they explained, you know, we'd be happy maybe if we got $500,000 for the wharf because that would be a good amount of money that they could use for a grant for, for matching funds. And I said, I probably would not recommend uh, support at five hundred thousand, but I would probably recommend support at one point at the full one point five. Yeah. Taking into effect, we're all made, being very clear with Congressman Larson's office because he keeps calling myself, he keeps calling Kristen from the trust board, keeps calling Helen, Helen Price Johnson and asking us for our support. And so we're all very, we've all got on the same page with him and been very clear that you can't keep asking us for a commitment because these decisions have to be made in a public meeting that has to be noticed. If you if you get to the point where you're going to want a legitimate recommendation or support, you have to give us at least 48 hours to try and call a special meeting and see if we can get quorums for both the trust board and the council. So he's very clear on that. So he's he keeps calling, and so I say, I can tell you what I would do to the council, what I can support or not support to the council, but that doesn't mean that would ultimately be the decision of the council. So, uh, Mayor, is that a 106 meeting? Does that have to do with 106 on the next one, see? Yes, it's oh, only about 106. 106. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's what's going to be the problem. It is a strictly a section 106 meeting, and, and of course, our community will not go for that. Yeah. They, they, they will want to talk about single siding and the number of flights and the shortness of the airfield and everything else. Like exactly what happened at the Department of Commerce meetings when they wanted to talk about their guidebook. It'll be the same thing. Don't miss it. I think we should all be there. So I'm not even going to discuss with you, I'm not even going to ask you what your opinion is on that because um, the Navy has made absolutely no comment about it, whether they're even considering it. As far as the Navy's concerned, they're in the termination process. So, so they don't have to show up at this meeting then any, if they don't want to. Who, the Navy? Yeah. Oh, well, they have to show up if the Department of Defense tells them to. to <laughs> no, the Navy is oh, not calling. Oh. The, the, the Advisory oh, Council oh, of oh, Historic oh. Preservation in oh, Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. is, yeah. is yeah. calling it. And they're putting us all on the agenda, but they put the Navy on the agenda. Um, shoot, I was going to say one more thing about that. Rats. Can't think what it was. Oh well. Okay. Um, I think it's very confusing for most people between the. Section 106 in the EIS. It's very confusing. Those of us involved in the negotiation for the Section 106 frequently got off track in our conversations. Frequently found ourselves talking about things that didn't have to do with the with historic resources. It's it is confusing because it's almost like if you say I recommend this mitigation the 106 doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with the EIS. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that I'm already seeing in the community. Yeah. In my mind, the Section 106 and the EIS are two completely separate processes. They're, they're actually handled by two separate groups back east. Um, they're funded by different pots of money, federal money. They have a different goals at the end. And I can really keep those two processes separate in my mind. Many active members of our community who have been working on this from day one feel very strongly that if we take money for the section 106 we're losing our ability to gain any kind of negotiation power with the EIS. I, I personally, I can see why they can feel that way. I, I guess you could, 
there, there could be some credit to that theory. I don't agree with that because they are two being handled by two completely different groups of people, and and they would be funded by completely different pots of money. If we get mitigation money for historic resources, that has nothing to do whether down the road we can get uh, state funding or additional federal funding for E, for EIS issues like easements to protect to protect property around there or other forms of mitigation, moving ball fields, um, other things that are historic. Does that make sense? So, so I don't I don't connect the two things. And and what I've said to here, I'll tell you what I've said to Sound Defense Alliance, Coopville Community Allies, the people that some of them not the whole not the entire groups but members of their groups feel that those issues are combined and I said okay you you know you guys have your job to do and I have my job to do and the council has their job to do I know that the Port of Coopville is planning to go out for a levy next year to keep the, the wharf from falling into Penn Cove right so if we were to turn down 1.5 million dollars which hasn't been offered by the Navy let me be very clear on that <laughs> But if we were to turn down a million and a half dollars for restoration of the wharf, that's money we're taking out of taxpayers' wallets, is the way I look at it. And I and they've come up with that amount of money because there's three parts to fixing the wharf. Fixing the pilings, then stabilizing the building, then repairing the roof. And they have and they have to be done in that order. And repairing the pilings is one million dollars. It's a little bit over a million dollars. So that amount of money would take care of, you know, the first step that needs to be done to save that wharf. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Again, not that anybody's offered us a million dollars, but that's kind of the way I would look at it if they did. Okay. You know, naturally through the Sound Defense Alliance, so I get all my information from.